So we parked here by this stone and wood structure, but this was built starting in about 1950. And it's not really the focus of why we're here. We're here for the older buildings. But the stonework from this building was taken from the original buildings and put up over here. So this is a building made of stolen materials in a way. We could say that. <laughs> but you know, back in the day, well, the cut stone was just a resource lying on the ground. And um, the people who came in later just uh, used what they had. Well, there's a lot of historic junk lying around. We see on the right here is a pile of old tin cans. But it's really fun. You can learn a lot about a site by looking at the cans that are left behind. You can actually get field guides to rusted cans. So here in front of us is one of the old uh, stone houses. So in about 1865, prospectors first came out into this country and uh, were shown where some silver deposits are by the native peoples. But in that year, the native peoples decided they didn't want the prospectors here and they drove them off. Okay. The next year, a whole bunch of prospectors came back because they wanted that silver and they drove off the Indians. And um, in that year, about 300 people arrived and lived here in the town of Logan. And they built their houses using the existing stone. So they have some cut stones here that they've, they've built up with walls. But um, by about uh, two years later, they had a post office here in a big bustling town. And then uh, three years after it got started, the whole town just dried up and blew away. But the silver didn't pan out and everyone moved off to um, other boom towns. Story of a lot of towns' lives in this state, right? Yeah, it is. And we have one historic photo from here. It was taken just after the, the town was abandoned. And it shows some fairly large stone buildings that could well have served as um, stores and a post office and, and other sorts of things that might have been here. I find myself looking at these foundations and trying to imagine what it was like to be a miner in those days never living anywhere for very long, always moving to the next boom town, and even taking pieces of your house with you to build the next house. It's hard to wrap my mind around such a different life. As Jim and I take a look around, it's fascinating to see what remains and to discuss how much we can learn from these bits and pieces. Mixed among the town site's ruins is also evidence of the area's even earlier inhabitants. On this rock behind us are some interesting petroglyphs. We've seen in the past the tendency of people to want to add their names to the rocks. Mm -hmm. But the people who lived here had enough respect for this rock that they didn't add any modern graffiti to it. It's really cool to see. So artists learn from other artists and, and the technique sort of evolves and changes along. And so here you can see an example where perhaps um, so this is kind of a stick figure. So this is maybe an old art, like the original master, and he he's does this and the stick figures, and then the, the next guy comes along and says, well, you know, when I look at the bighorn, it doesn't look like a stick figure. The, when the bighorn faces me, his horns curl out. So this is almost, you're looking face on to the bighorn and side on to his body. And so um, the student is learned from the master, but is surpassing it in, in a more realistic vision, of, a representation of the vision that he sees. You know, sort of moving to that next step in the evolution of, of representational art. It makes you remember that it was individuals and different people and different styles and just like handwriting is different, right? Yeah, yeah.